Hey everyone, it's Ken here from Northern Viking Everyday and today I'm going to be showing you how to install and set up or initialize a secondary backup drive in a Windows 11 desktop PC. I'm running out of storage on my PC and today we're going to be using this Seagate 8 terabyte hard drive. It's a SATA drive. It's the three and a half inch internal drive. Now of course if you are interested in this drive or any of the components I'm using today, they're all linked below in the description. But let's go ahead and dive right into setting this up, initializing it and getting it running. So we'll start out with installing the hard drive in our PC. So make sure your power supply is turned off and unplugged. And if you need more space, maybe go ahead and unplug all your other cables. I'm going to move my PC over to my main desk here. So we'll unplug everything and we'll remove our side panels. I have a glass panel that just lifts off and then the back side, there's a couple of thumb screws and it just slides off. Each PC case is slightly different. Now you'll need to find your drive bay. I've got a three and a half inch drive bay down here at the bottom with a tray. You might have a couple of these. Sometimes they're on the other side of the PC as well. So locate that on your computer. Hopefully you have one. And we're also gonna need to find our screws here for mounting the hard drive. Now these came with my PC case. If you don't have any, I'll link some below in the description so you can pick some up for yourself. And we'll take our hard drive and we'll put it into the enclosure here. Make sure that the ports are facing the correct direction so that you can easily plug them in. So we'll line up the screw holes here on the side. Make sure they line up perfectly. I'm going to be putting in four screws on the bottom today and then one on each side. I'll get them threaded by finger here and then I'll tighten them down with a Phillips screwdriver. Make sure you don't tighten them down too hard, just nice and snug. Three and four. And then again, I'll put one on each side. Perfect. Now I'll slide that tray back in and I may need to pull it out a little bit later to get everything connected, but uh, it just slides in on my case here. Next up, we need to grab our SATA cable. These came with my motherboard. I've got a couple different types here. I've got a straight one as well as a 90 degree bend one. I like the 90 degree bend ones. They hide the cables a little bit better. And if you don't have one of these, I'll link some below as well. Again, mine came with my motherboard. Turning our computer around here, we need to look for our SATA ports. They're typically located down here in the bottom right-hand corner. I have six of them right under my graphics card here. So a couple of them are covered. And I would check in your motherboard manual if there's specific ports you should be using. I can use the ones here at the bottom. So I'll take my SATA cable and feed it through to the back side. And again, I'm using that 90 degree cable. So I'll just plug that in there and it'll feed back nicely, just like that. We'll turn our PC case around. Next up, we need to find our SATA power supply cable. It'll run from our power supply down here. And what it looks like on the ends, it'll have a connector that looks like that with a little notch. And they're commonly daisy chained together so you can plug in multiple items. Now some power supplies have all the cables attached. Some are semi-modular and some are fully modular and you might have some extra cables in your box. If you're not seeing this, have a look and those can be plugged in right here. You can see it says SATA for myself. There's the little six port right here and I'll plug in a cable here and show you grab it and just plugs in like that. Let's connect our hard drive here. I did pull it out so I can show you better. We'll grab our power connector. And again, make sure that notch lines up and it's the correct direction. We'll go ahead and plug that right into the hard drive, just like that. And then grab our SATA cable that comes from our motherboard. Again, the same thing, make sure that notch lines up and we'll plug that in just like that. And those are the only two cables we need. We'll slide that tray right back in there. And then you can take all your cables and clean them up and tuck them right back in. We'll put on our side panels and I'll go ahead and plug everything in and start up the computer here and we'll move on to setting it up right on the computer itself.
So I got everything plugged in and I turned on my computer here and in my file explorer, my new drive is not showing up. This is normal. I've got my C drive here, I've got my Google drive and I've got two one terabyte SSDs in here, but my new eight terabyte drive is not showing up. So let's show you how to set that up and initialize it. We're gonna head down here to the bottom to our start menu and we're gonna right click on the start menu, not left click, but right click. And you'll see a little menu that pops up here and you should see the option that says disk management. You can go ahead and left click on that and that's gonna to start to load up your disk management. And this could take a little bit to load up depending on how big your drives are and how many you have on there. So we'll wait for that to load up. There we go, that took about 30 seconds or so for myself. And this pop-up happened, it's called initialize disk and that's actually what we're looking for today. If that did not happen for you, automatically. Let me just hit cancel here. I'll show you how to bring that up. So you can see here in the disk management, all of my drives are down below. I've got two SSDs and my C drive here, but we're looking for our unallocated drive. If this is a brand new drive, it should say unallocated. Make sure you are selecting the correct disk and not here where the black bar is. We want to go off to the left hand side here where it says disk one, or it could be a di different disk number. So keep that in mind. But in this gray area next to the unallocated, we are gonna right click, not left click, but right click. And you'll see the initialize disk option there. We can go ahead and left click on that and we'll get back to that pop-up. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and make some selections. I like to select GPT. This is the newer or more modern version. We'll go ahead and make sure that's selected. We'll hit okay. And it's gonna start initializing that disk for us. And over on the left here, it switched from not initialized to online, and that's what we're looking for today. So let's go ahead and allocate our drive here. Again, make sure you are working with the correct drive. We don't wanna format the wrong drive and lose all the information. So I know it's this one that says unallocated. I'll go ahead and select that. And we're gonna open up the new simple volume wizard. So in this open area right here in the middle where all the lines are, we're gonna right click and you should see the new simple volume right here. We can go ahead and select that and it's gonna open up the new simple volume wizard. We can go ahead and hit next and it's gonna ask us to specify the volume size. I want the maximum volume out of this drive so I'm gonna leave that at the maximum volume right there. We'll go ahead and hit next. Now it's gonna ask us to assign a drive letter or path. So we can assign whichever letter we like. I don't like to use D, I like to keep that for little thumb drives, flash drives, that sort of thing. I'm gonna probably pick, let's say W. I've already got X and Y for my other ones, that's why they're not showing up on the list. So I'll go ahead and pick W for this one. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit next here. And there's some more options there if you are interested in those, I'll let you do some research on your own. The next one here, it says, do not format this volume. If you don't wanna format the drive, you make sure you select that. We are gonna be formatting this today. We're gonna to select the NTFS file system and the allocation unit size is default and the volume label here. This is where we can change the name of our drive. So I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna type in whatever I like here. I'm gonna do Seagate and I'll do eight terabyte HDD. And again, you can name it whatever you like. I'm gonna leave this perform a quick format selected right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit next. So I'll go ahead and do that. Completing the new simple volume wizard. There's all sorts of information here. And then we'll just go ahead and hit finish. And it's gonna format that for us. And that completed and you can see now I've got the Seagate eight terabyte HDD, it's the W drive and it's showing as healthy. If I open up my file explorer, you can see it shows up right here as well. It says 7.27 terabytes free and I can go ahead and copy files in here, use it as backup and it's all set up and ready to use. And really it's that simple to set up and install a secondary drive here in Windows 11 for you to use as backup for all your extra files. So if this quick tutorial gave you value, if it did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe here on YouTube. And if you're interested in more information on this drive, I have created a quick unboxing and speed test for you to check out. I'll have that link below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care.